This morning, it is love. Had it not been for that love this morning, we could never be in communion. Amen. There is something in my soul which keeps the shadows all away. It is began to twitch. 
He said, Richard, I got the hold of him even tighter. He said, Richard, I love you. Whole body began to, to quake, almost having compulsive episodes. Because he never heard those words of being loved. The love of God is a way of reaching your places you never knew existed. Measureless and strong. This is the love that we have in virtual land. This is the love that we offer you today. If you do not know Christ as your personal Savior, we offer him to you today. Jesus Christ, him crucified, resurrected, and sitting on the right hand of the Father. There is a woman of God in the house that has me to marvel. Because she was a quiet flower when I met her 12 years old, 11 years old. And that flower grew to be a tree as planted by the rivers, the waters. And her fruits continue to bear in the city, in the GTA, <laughs> across Canada, across the states. I walked miles with her. I flown with her, preached alongside her. And the imprint and impact she makes proves that she is a gift to the world Amen. and proof that women are called into ministry Amen. to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I'm grateful to see her in our midst because I know that she is a hot commodity laboring for the master. Amen. She does not do this for money. And I know this because people tell me she's not doing it for money. But she has a heart to minister. Can you stand to your feet? And stretch your hands towards her. And for, before you say anything, say, thank you, Lord, for her. Thank you, Lord, for her. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for the fruits that I'm going to receive because you planted her in rich soil. Bless her now as she delivers your truth to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome the reverend. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Come on, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. That's it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, do that again. Hallelujah. Come on, do that one more time. Hallelujah. You see her do it until it automatically flows. Hallelujah. Somebody said hallelujah. It is the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We can't get tired or weary. Amen. We can't get tired or weary of praising the Lord. Amen. Every time you let out a praise, it's like it's not enough. And you got to let out another one and another one and another one. Amen. Amen. Because that's how good God is. We can't summarize him in one word. The writer said that if the ocean were like ink, it still would not be enough. Amen. To say thank you for the things that God has done for us. Amen. So I just first of all want to greet um, our uh, our spiritual father, Pastor John Walker. Blessings, Daddy. Praise the name of the Lord. And to the Godfather himself. 
Dr. E.L., amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And my partner in crime, Pastor O'Neill, and Sister Sandra, amen. My meeting, right? <laughs> amen. Bless God. And to all of God's wonderful people, just want to say welcome to the house of the Lord. We had, we've been having amazing services, amen. 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 The Spirit of the Lord is here, amen. Amen. We had an awesome youth service last week. I'm looking for my youths and I don't see them. Amen. But nonetheless, we recognize that we're also in vacation season. Amen. 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 And just now, I am going to be gone as well. I think the next time that you see me will be sometime mid-August. Sorry, Daddy. Mid-August. So I'm going to be taking off for a little while. Next week, I'll be out. And then the following week, I'll be heading to Jamaica. Amen. To do ministry there. So when you don't see me, pray for me. And then when I come back, I'll be at uh, I'll be at headquarters for that first uh, Sunday in August. Uh, um, so it'll be a little while before I'm here. So I want to definitely make the most of it. Amen? Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. So remember to pray for me. Yes, we do. Amen. As I go out, uh, that travel to Jamaica, certainly looking forward to it. Uh, but it's not vacation. Not like when Sister Sandra goes away. Uh, she goes on vacation. Uh, this is ministry, and so I certainly pray for your prayers. Amen. I'm so happy to have Mike here this morning. Amen. Amen. My spiritual son. Amen. That uh, God has uh, indeed or is doing wonderful work in his life. And uh, he's getting ready to go off to uh, Indiana? Albany. Albany is getting ready to go off uh, to Albany for school, and so we are going to make sure that we pray for him before he goes. Amen. Amen. We had an awesome service uh, on Thursday night at his baptism, and we're anticipating that where he goes, that God goes with him. Amen. And does use him as an instrument in his hands to win others. Amen. Amen. Because uh, where they are going, we may not be able to go. And so we got to equip them to go out. Amen. And that's what we're about. We want to reach them and release them. My, release them as they go and, uh, and, and spread the word of God. Amen. So uh, we will be praying for you as we, before the service is out. I want you to turn with me this morning to Judges chapter 6. So, Judges chapter 6. And we're going to read a few verses from there. Father, we just thank you for the revelation of your word. And even, Father, as it prepares to enter our spirits, I pray, Father, that we'll be open to hear and to receive, God, what you're saying in this season. What you're doing in this hour, mighty God. Allow the fruit of your word, mighty God, to fall upon the good soil of our hearts. That in due time, Father, it will replenish and it will bear more fruit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Judges chapter 6, and it reads, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites, because the power of the Midian was so oppressive. The Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountains, clefts, caves, and strongholds. And whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They encamped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkey. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. So Midian, Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. And when the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, this is what the Lord this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians. And I delivered you 
from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship other gods or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. But you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash the Abizarite where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of the Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of of the Midian's hand, am I not the one sending you? Pardon me, my Lord Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least of my family. And the Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen? Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. The passage of scripture that we have just read is a series in a time when Israel continually rebelled against the Lord. After obtaining victory after victory, the last uh, victory they had was over Caesarea, and after that, uh, they had peace for 40 years. For 40 years, everything was doing well. They were doing good for 40 years. They were prospering for 40 years. They were serving God for 40 years. They were showing up in the temple, and they were doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But while things were doing good, while things were going well for them, they forgot the way of the Lord. And we can't be too judgmental or critical of them because many times when things are going well for us, we don't remember how to pray. When things are going well for us, we don't know or remember to show up to church consistently. Come on, somebody. When things are going well for us, uh, we, we, we're not focused upon heaven. Come on, come when on. things are going well and you have everything that you need, you might not remember to seek the Lord. Nice. And so this is the place that they found themselves in. Things were going well. Until uh, all of a sudden it wasn't going so well. Yes. What was happening? They were living well. And they did not recognize that the line had been moved. Come on. Come on. Because you know there is a line of demarcation. There's some stuff that we know that we ought not to do. But when we're not living close to God, we call the right the wrong right and the right wrong. So their lines of demarcation had moved.
The enemy had gotten a hold of their mind. And so now they're having to live behind closed doors in the cave, unable to walk about freely. And sometimes it's how the enemy comes and shows us something else that is greater. And we trade up what we have for what we don't know. And we find ourselves hiding in the cave. We find this young man, Gideon, and the children of Israel struggling to survive. Hiding and being defeated instead of living in their cities, in their homes, worshiping in their temples. They find themselves hiding from the enemy, unable to even cultivate their food in the open. Oh, Lord, mm. Everybody knows that when you're threshing wheat, there is a process for threshing the wheat. It needs a free open area because when you throw it up, Moses asked, who should I tell? 
I am that I am. He identifies, identifies his, himself as the I am. And here he reminds them, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship any other God. And he says, but you did not listen. Ask myself a question, God, what are you saying that I have refused to hear? What are you saying that I'm not listening to, that I'm not paying attention to? Because many times we become distracted. But I heard someone say, you got to keep the main thing the main thing. Yes. Tell yourself, I'm going to keep the main thing the main thing. Israel did not keep the main thing the main thing. They wandered off and turned their backs upon God. And then experienced the destruction. How many knows? How many of us know that disobedience and sin puts us in a place that we don't belong it puts us in a place that we have no business being there. Right. I was when I when I was younger, a, a friend of mine, you know, we have our little group that we all hang out with, uh, and, and and one of them uh, being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, decided that she was gonna test the water. So it wasn't me, I promise you. <laughs> it wasn't me. Not telling a, not telling a story affecting it as if it wasn't me. I confess it was me. And she told us. On Monday when she came back to school, she said, I went to the psychic. Watch this. She walked into the palm reader because I guess her friends were going and she decided she wanted to try something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she walks into the palm reader and the palm reader looks at her and says, you don't belong here. Oh my God. <laughs> The palm reader refused to read her palm. <laughs> she stood there and the palm reader said, you got to go. I can't function while you're here. <laughs> when you are marked for God. Breaks down the fabric 
of who we are. We think we have joy because we're laughing. Yes. But when the lights go out, wow. mighty God, wow. when the crowd is gone yes. and darkness comes yes. and you're by yourself, you begin to wrestle with a fear. Oh God. Sin and disobedience. And so now the consequence of their sin is that they're living in the caves. Yes. Oftentimes we think that what we're facing is because God has turned against us. Many times we feel the consequence of our decisions. When we feel the consequences of our decisions, we have a tendency to want to blame others. We want to blame other people. Yeah. We want to blame the system. We want to blame other things. Nobody was there when I called. There was no one for me to lean on. We make the excuses of why we're not being successful. And we look for others to blame. We tell God, well, there is no God. Come on. There was a young man that I was counseling some time ago. And uh, his family had gone through a, br a, a breakup, a divorce, and it was a nasty divorce. And this young man that was raised in church, raised uh, in, in the temple of God, poor, when I tell you, born and raised, I heard this young man said, there is no, no God. God. Mm -hmm. Broken. Lord. And when we're so broken, we begin to believe the lie of the enemy. When we equate our circumstance to if there is a God or not, then we bring God down. We box him in. But we have got to understand that what we are facing doesn't mean that there isn't no God. It simply means that we have got to look up. Because he's greater than the circumstance. He's greater than the situation. He's greater than what we're facing. God is great. The writer said, and greatly to be praised. God is great. David yes. said, I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that created the heavens and the earth. When we are displaced, we lose our identity. Yes, yes, yes. We lose our focus, Pastor. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Come on, come on. And somehow, somehow, Gideon thought he was talking about somebody else. Oh, How can God call you a mighty man of valor when you're living in the cave? How can God call you mighty when you're broken? How can God call you out of it while you're in your weakness and declare that you are mighty? Glory to God. This is what God did. He called him mighty man of valor. He was broken. He was cast down. He's sitting unable to produce as he should, unable to live as he should. But here the angel comes in his brokenness, in his weakness, and calls him a mighty man hey. of valor. What is God saying in your circumstance and in the situation that you are in? He's still calling you mighty. Mighty, he's still calling you. And he's saying that even though you're in the circumstance that you are, I want you to know that I am mightier than the circumstance. Amen. Because God is not judging you by the place that you're standing, but he's calling you to the place, or he's speaking to you to the place that he has called you to be. Mighty man of valor. He says to him that he is mighty. And my laptop is not working. 
Gideon looks as the angel speaks to him. And we can consider Gideon in his condition and say, well, why did God call him mighty? Why? How? What was he mighty in? Mm -hmm. Well, he was mighty in knowledge because he knew what God had done for his people. So he was mighty in his knowledge. Yes. He was mighty in knowing that God had already delivered them. Come on, Come on somebody. Let me go! 
Come on, Thank now. you, God. That yes. says yes. that he is the least of his father's uh -huh. house. Yeah. This same man, God gives an assignment to. Mm -hmm. I've come to tell somebody this morning yeah. that there is an assignment for you. Yes. Yes. My God, there is an assignment yeah. on your life. And it does not matter what you look like. It does not matter what you sound like. There is an assignment for you to do. It does not matter how you consider yourself. But there is an assignment for you to do. For the Lord has already come out in a word concerning you. And if you are faithful to that which he has spoken, the Lord said, I will fight your battle for you. Yes. Mighty God. He gives him the assignment. One of the first things I want us to recognize here is that it required him to be obedient. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so now he had to break the trend of disobedience. And now he was now hearing the voice of the Lord. And now God was saying to him, I have an assignment for you to do. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, I think in verse 25 it says, no, it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the wooden image that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of a rock in the proper arrangement. The Bible says, so Gideon took ten men from among his servants, and Obedience. Obedience is better. That's the sacrifice. Oh God. The first instruction that God gives to Gideon is to tear down the altar. Tear down the altar of your father. Yes. Say what? Not somebody else, Daddy. My Daddy. The change must start in your house. Come on now. Come on now. We're looking for the change to be in everybody else's house, but the change has got to start in my house. Joshua said, I will be in my house. We will serve the Lord. The change has got to start here. And so God is saying, listen, I'm coming and I'm coming to clean up for you. I'm coming to set you free. But the change has got to start in you. You have
justice. Yes. In the proper order. Let worship be done. The Bible says in the proper arrangement. Some of us want to do it our own way. Yes. And I know my own way. Last yesterday, Pastor Neil said something after prayer, and, 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 and he knows me because then I gave him a look. And he held his head up and, and he smiled because he knows what I was thinking. Because I didn't want to follow that instruction. <laughs> I'm confessing, Pastor. For yourself. For yourself. For yourself. We want our own way. Yeah. We want to do what is right in our own eyes. Yes. O'Neill, don't use that against me next time you see me. <laughs>
the miracle Come on. or the work. If you read later on down, uh, the Bible says uh, that Gideon uh, went with 300 men. Yeah. After having thousands, uh, God said, listen, it's too much. Yeah. Just in case that they think that it's because of the number. Yeah. Just in case they think that it's because of their own strength. Oh my God. He said, I'm going to shave it down. Yeah. God just needs one. Just one. One can make a difference. One can change thousands. One, yes. one, one. As a matter of fact, the Bible says one shall chase a thousand. Now, I, I, I'm good with the one. One can put a thousand. But when two come together, it doesn't just double. And if he can do that with two, how much can he do with a host? But in this moment, God said, listen, I don't need tens of thousands. Gideon, I just need one. I just need one person to be obedient. I just need one person to stand up. I just need one person to be courageous. I just need one person to understand who they are. One. one. Just one. Just one. Yeah. That's the title of this message. Just one. one. Just one can make the difference. Gideon alone made the difference for his nation. When he got ready to tear down the altar, he went and he got ten more to come with him to make the job a little easier. But it started with just. Can you raise your hand and say, Father, I am your just one. I am just one. I am just one. I am the one, God. I want to be the arrow in your hand. I am the one, the one, the one, the one that you call, the one that you died for, the one that you came, the one, God. I am the one. The one can make a difference. You are the one that can make a difference for your family. You are the one that can make a difference for your children. You are the one. We have seen the power of one. One. Gideon obedience changed the course of Israel. Brought them out of the cave and allowed them to be free and the ability to reign just one. Can we stand to our feet? All of us. You know, many times we don't want to travel that path alone. We want company, right? We want somebody there. We want support. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you and God together when God is in you you're not just one Moses thought he was just one he didn't know that he had the I am that I am Moses said I can't speak and God says just to give you a little support I'm going to send your brother to go with you. But all he needed was really just Moses. Can you be the one this afternoon that God will raise up 